An important issue is emerging here in Minnesota that many other states have already grappled with, that is, the definition of marriage. During the 2010 legislative session, there have been five bills introduced to redefine marriage. One prominent state senator has pledged that next year, the legislature will make an all-out effort to change the definition of marriage from being an institution of one man and one woman for the benefit of children and society to an institution without gender roles, where the desires of individual adults are the primary focus. Naturally, many Catholics want to know the Church's position on this critically important issue. Marriage matters to every Minnesotan, whether or not we personally choose to marry. Intuitively, we realize it is the natural way we bring together men and women to conceive and raise the next generation. The complementary nature of the sexes is not only at the heart of the human experience, it is one we can see throughout nature and one that Christ speaks to in the gospel. Nurturing a thriving natural culture of marriage is critical for society. High rates of fatherlessness and family fragmentation impoverish children and leave women with the unfair burden of parenting alone. Children suffer, but so does the whole of society when marriage fails in its irreplaceable task of bringing together mothers and fathers with their children. Defining marriage as simply a union of consenting parties will change the core meaning of marriage in the public square for every Minnesotan. At best, so-called same-sex marriage is an untested social experiment and at worst, it poses a dangerous risk with potentially far-reaching consequences. An exercise of caution should be in order. Back in the early 1970s, the experts told us that no-fault divorce would liberate women from bad marriages without affecting anyone else. As expected, the divorce rate skyrocketed. Perhaps unexpectedly, we now know that as a result of divorce, as many as one-third of women fall into poverty with their children. Social science was late to catch up with the common sense wisdom that children need both a mom and a dad working together to protect them. Throughout history, virtually every society has recognized that marriage is a committed union between one man and one woman. What's more, it has long been acknowledged that marriage is not only about the happiness of adults, but that it is also a concern about the well-being for all of society, which is to say, the common good. Marriage is the way a man and woman bind their love into a lifelong commitment that is mutual, exclusive, and open to new life, where they promise not only to love each other, but to love any children whom, through God's grace, they create together. Marriage exists in civil law primarily in order to provide communal support for bringing mothers and fathers together to care for their children. What will happen to children growing up in a world where the law teaches them that moms and dads are interchangeable and that marriage has nothing intrinsically to do with the bearing and raising of children? We know from experience that in other states, children as young as first graders are taught by the government that gay marriage and traditional marriage are both the same and that the influence of a mother and a father on the development of a child somehow doesn't matter. We also know that not all children live in the ideal situation. Many single parents work hard to raise children in less than ideal circumstances. But so-called same-sex marriage would certainly be a declaration by the government that we have officially abandoned the idea that children need both a mom and a dad. There is no question about where the teaching of the church lies. Marriage is the union of one man and one woman. The church also teaches that all of us, including our brothers and sisters with same-sex attraction, are children of God with intrinsic human value. The Church's teaching on marriage is not a condemnation of homosexual persons as human beings. It is simply a reflection not only of the scriptures, but of the unique procreative nature of the male-female bond. Whether one accepts the teaching of the Church on marriage or not, I hope we can all agree on this. If we are to change our societal understanding of marriage, it should be the people themselves and not politicians or judges who should make this decision. It is for this reason that the Archdiocese believes that the time has come for voters 
to be presented directly with an amendment to our state constitution to preserve our historic understanding of marriage. In fact, this is the only way to put the one man, one woman definition of marriage beyond the reach of the courts and politicians. In years past, our elected officials told us that we did not need a marriage amendment because there was no realistic threat from the courts or the legislature, but that clearly is no longer the case. 31 states have passed marriage amendments, and it's time for Minnesotans to have their say. A question as important as the future of this great social institution should not be decided by a ruling elite, but by the people of Minnesota themselves. The church's position is simple. Marriage is the union of one man and one woman, and to protect this truth, it is time in Minnesota to let the people speak.